So there's this video going around, and I believe that it's a deception by um, the devil himself. Um, the whole question is, is the Lucifer of Isaiah 14 really the devil? Now we're going to take a look at, it's going to be a little bit different today. We're going to kind of do a little bit of Bible study. We're going to take a look of look at the, the king of Tyrus from Ezekiel 28 and the king of Babylon from Isaiah 14, which the word Lucifer comes from or the title Lucifer. Now before we do all that, let's define the word star. Jesus Christ himself said in the book of Revelation that a star symbolizes an angel. A star symbolizes an angel. Originally, an angel is God's messenger, a messenger of God. Specifically, an angel is a cherub, specifically. You know, one of those, one of those uh, beings with the wings and they are light and they are fast and they are like lightning. So just remember that throughout this whole video, a star is a symbol for an angel, a cherub. That's going to be very important. Now, I have a little bit of time. We're going to read Ezekiel 28 before I take you guys to work with me. So in Ezekiel 28, um, God tells Ezekiel to take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. And it doesn't take much to realize that he's not really talking to, 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 to the king of Tyrus here. Here's what he says. Ezekiel 28, starting from verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Talking to the king of Tyrus here. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. The king of Tyrus was in Eden, the garden of God. He wasn't even living back there, right? Every precious stone was thy covering. Who is he really talking to? Yes, he's talking to the king of Tyrus. But who is the power behind king, king Ty the king of Tyrus? Okay, let's, go, let's keep going. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, and beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in the in the day that thou was created. Was the king of Tyrus created or was he born? He was born. He was a human being, right? He was born. But this says that he was created. So who's who's he, who's God really talking to? Let's keep going. Thou art the anointed cherub. That covereth. Now we now now it's revealed. Is the king of Tyrus a cherub? No, a cherub is one of those those angels with the wings and and are and his light. It's clear that God was not really talking to the king of Tyrus. Yes, he was talking to the king of Tyrus, but he was talking through the king of Tyrus, and he was talking to the power behind the king of Tyrus, which is the devil. Because if you guys remember, a covering cherub, a cherub that covers. Remember in in Exodus when they had to make the uh, the ark, what did they have to make on top of that ark? They had to make a covering cherub, two of them, one on each side, a covering cherub, looking down at the ark. And those cherub beam was supposed to cover the glory of God because it was t because the glory of God was too bright. So they were called covering cherub, covering cherub beam. So Ezekiel 28 verse 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. That's not the king of Tyrus. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. And then he goes on to say, I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. That's not the king of Tyrus. It is obvious that God was talking to someone else. God was talking through the king of Tyrus, the power behind him. The power behind the scenes. Because remember, we are not wrestling with flesh and blood here. We're, we are wrestling with principalities. Who was the principality behind the king of Tyrus? That's the devil. Uh, so I got my Bible study face on. And you guys already know that when I do my Bible study face, it's serious business here. I'll see you guys in a little bit. We are going to work. What is this, baby? What? What is this? Song that I just wrote. You wrote this song?
so there is this K-pop concert here in Chicago by, by at a Rosemont Theater. K-pop is a Korean pop, um, Korean pop music. You can't believe how many white girls are there. I just, I just, I just dropped off three white girls. They're literally, sixteen-year-olds, three sixteen-year-olds. I dropped them off at this this K-pop concert, and they are from six hours away. The hype is real. The hype is real, folks. So when I was a little younger, I used to get in trouble a lot. I used to get in trouble with my um, with my cousin as well, because I used to. My cousin was a little bit uh, um, younger than I am, and every time we get into trouble, it's all my fault. I'm the promoter of the trouble that we would get into. So one time, I convinced her to go to the forest with me because we lived in a village and our backyard pretty much is a, a, a huge forest. Um, a huge forest with mountains and things like that. That was my backyard back then in, in the Philippines when we lived in a village. So I convinced my little cousin, I said, hey, let's, let's wander around in the forest. I was nine years old, okay? Um, and I knew that going into the forest could be very dangerous. I wanted to go swimming and I didn't, I didn't know how to swim. There was a pond in the middle of the forest and I didn't know how to swim. So I wanted to go and try it out. I didn't know that it was really, really deep that pond good thing i didn't really swim i got scared and i didn't swim but anyway we we went into the forest just me and her nobody else we we um would have got lost my parents were gone my grandparents were the ones who were taking care of me and them and my uncle who's my little cousin's dad were looking for us they were looking around the village looking for us they didn't know that we were in the in the forest when we got back we got we got in so much trouble we got in so much trouble when we got back because they were looking for us. They were worried about us. They didn't, they didn't know where we went. And so my uncle started yelling at my little cousin. You know, started started lecturing my little cousin. He was telling my little cousin, look, you could have gotten into so much trouble. You could, have, you, you could have gotten killed. You know how dangerous it is to go into the forest without an adult. He said that to my little cousin, but see, my little cousin didn't know that. I was in the room when he was lecturing her. My little cousin didn't know that, but I knew that. So what he was saying to my little cousin penetrated through her, and it went directly to me. So as he was lecturing my little cousin, he was also lecturing me at the same time through my little cousin. And I know that he purposed to lecture me through my little cousin because of the things that he was saying, specific things that he was saying. He was saying you could have you could have got lost. There there was a brook there. There was a there was a guy, there was a person there who was a witch. There was a person there who was a witch. I knew that, but my little cousin didn't know that. But my uncle had to mention it because I was in the room. He also said, you knew how dangerous it is to go into the forest without an adult. My little cousin didn't know that, but I knew that because I got that lecture from my grandparents. I knew that it was dangerous for us to go into the forest alone. My little cousin didn't know that, but since I was in the room, my uncle had to mention it because he knows that my little cousin was not the promoter of that act of disobedience there. He knew that it was me. He knew that I was the guy, I was the main guy that promoted that act of disobedience. Anyway, Revelation 12, starting from verse 8 about the dragon and his angels. They prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. The dragon and his angels, they were in heaven, but their place is no longer in heaven. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So here's a picture of the dragon, which is Satan, the devil, who was cast out, who used to be in, in heaven, who used to have a place in heaven, but now he was cast out, and he fell from heaven. He fell from heaven. Where did he fall to? into the earth, into the ground. So here is an angel. Now remember, an angel is what symbolically? A star, right? So here's a star or an angel that fell from heaven into the ground, okay? Here's an angel, a star that fell from heaven into the ground. Let's go to Isaiah 14. 
let's go to Isaiah 14. This is where God was talking to, well, God told Isaiah to tell the king of Babylon something, okay? So really, it's God's message to the king of Babylon. Now, check this out. Starting from verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? He's talking to the king of Babylon here. But who is he really talking to? Was the king of Babylon in heaven? Did he fall from heaven? You see, he's, he's lecturing the king of Babylon, but he was saying some very specific things to the king of Babylon that only the devil would get. Only the devil can get this. Remember, we're not battling, we're not wrestling with flesh and bones, we're wrestling with principalities here. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Again, what is Lucifer? It means light bearer or day star. It literally means day star, morning star. Now a star is symbolic for God's angel. Was the king of Babylon God's angel? Right then and there, you can already tell that yes, he was talking to, even though he was talking to the, to the king of Babylon, he was talking through the king of, he was lecturing the king of Babylon, but there are some specific things that he was saying that triggered the devil. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, above the angels of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. How, how, does, how does the king of Babylon... Okay, first of all, if the king of Babylon wants to be the most high, the highest god... Now, this, this guy is a pagan king. His highest god is the sun god. He's not going to say, oh, I'm going to set my throne above the stars of God in the sides of the north. He's not going to say that. Those pagan kings don't believe that the god of the Hebrews is the highest god. They believe, those pagan kings believe that the sun god is the highest god. So why would the king of Babylon, a pagan god, say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up my throne in the sides of the north? This is specific towards the Hebrew god, the god of the Bible. Okay, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. That is a title for the God of the Bible. So yes, God was talking to the king of Babylon. But who is the principality behind the king of Babylon? None other than the devil himself. Remember, there are two sides of the great controversy here. There are two principalities. And if you are not abiding by the principles of God, whose principles are you abiding by? Whose principles is the king of Babylon abiding by? Is he abiding by the principles of God? Or is he abiding by the principles of the devil who is, be, who is the power behind the king of Babylon? Remember, this is a pagan king. And it's interesting that his highest god is the sun and Lucifer means morning star. That's the sun. There is no question. I mean, this is basic Christian knowledge. There is no question that Lucifer is Satan. If you go on, it says, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Yes, sure, he's talking to the man. He's talking to the king of Babylon. But who is he really talking to? He's talking through the king of Babylon to the power behind the king of Babylon, to the one responsible of the principalities that the king of Babylon was living by. And that's the devil. I find it very similar. I find it very similar the way that my uncle was lecturing my little cousin. He triggered me in that lecture because he was lecturing her, but he was also lecturing me through her because there were some specific details that my uncle was saying to my little cousin that I was affected by and that I know that he was talking to me through her. You guys get what I'm saying? Planet Fitness today. I don't have time to go to the other gym. But it's okay. We'll make do. We also have a pear and an apple. We might not be able to cram all of this in, but we'll see what we can do. Sometimes you go to the store and you luck out because you get beets and they have beet greens attached to them. I've found that it's best for any blender to, to throw the greens in first because that way they blend up the best. 
and in, in very small quantities, that's actually very beneficial for exploding cancer cells. Here we go. The problem is, number one is that So let's recap. Let's recap. In the book of Revelation, Jesus said that the seven stars are seven angels. So symbolically, a star is an angel. In Ezekiel 28, God was speaking to the king of Tyre, king of Tyrus. And the things that he was saying was very, very specific. Telling the king of Tyrus that he was in the Garden of Eden, that he was the covering cherub, that he was perfect when he was created. Same thing with Isaiah 14. God wanted to send a message to the king of Babylon. He says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Lucifer means morning star. And a star in the Bible is symbolic for a, an angel. How art thou fallen from heaven, O morning angel? It echoes what Jesus was saying in Luke 10 and verse 18 and when he said, I beheld Satan fall from heaven. I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. So did God really send a message to the king of Babylon? Yes, but he also sent that same message to the power responsible for the principalities behind the king of Babylon, which is the devil. He was the one that was fallen from heaven, not the king of Babylon. Because the king of Babylon was never in heaven to fall from heaven. If you guys look at the great controversy throughout Revelation, Revelation 13, Revelation 17, all throughout Revelation, you see that the great conflict, the great controversy is about worship. You either worship God or you worship the beast. The Bible says that Christ is now on the throne. He's on the seat. And in the Bible, when you sit on the seat, when you sit on the throne, you have the authority. It says that Christ will sit with his father because his father gave him that seat. Now, if you give someone the seat, that means you're giving them authority. So when we worship Jesus Christ, when we worship Christ, we're also worshiping God the father because he is the one that gave him that seat. In the book of Revelation, it says that the dragon gave the beast its power and seat. The dragon gave the beast its authority. So when people are worshiping the beast, they're also worshiping the dragon. And who's the dragon? Satan. Now that is an important aspect of Lucifer or Satan's character. If you go to Isaiah 14 and read verses 12 through 14, you will see the whole motive of the devil. He wants to ascend into heaven. He wants to exalt his throne above the stars or angels of God. He wants to sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He wants to ascend above the heights of the cloud. He wants to be like the most high. That means he wants worship. So if you detach this characteristic from Satan, the devil, then that's one less proof that the devil wants worship. And if you don't believe that the devil wants to worship, this is how he can deceive you into worshiping him. Because if we say, oh, the enemy doesn't want to worship, then we won't be ready for when it does happen. And I believe the idea that Lucifer from Isaiah 14 is not Satan is a deception from the devil himself so that he can detach his name from his motives. The more we know what Satan's motives are, the more ready we can be. The less we know about Satan's motives, the less ready we are for when he does implement a false worship, a false system of worship. So if you guys like this video and were blessed by it, please don't forget to like and share. Share with your friends, your family, your relatives, your coworkers, your kids. Your kids. And if you're new to this channel and you want more Christian content and Bible studies and vlogs, please subscribe and hit the bell. And if you want to support this channel, this video ministry, please pray for this video ministry and donate at schoolforprofits.tv and we will take the donation money and we will advertise these videos so that we can reach more people with Bible truth and the gospel. Praise God always. See you guys tomorrow.